हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू इन माई यूट्यूब चैनल डेट इज बायोलॉजी सेंटर टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू बायो मॉलिक्यूल सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग टाइम लेट्स स्टार्ट ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू नो वट डू यू मीन बाय सेलुलर पुल ओके लेट्स दी हेयर सेलुलर पुल ओके द कलेक्शन ऑफ ऑल द बायो मॉलिक्यूल द कलेक्शन of all the bio molecules which are present in a living cell which are present in a living cell is called cellular pool okay now let's see what kind of these bio molecules Which are present in a cellular pool, then it may be lipids, it may be carbohydrates, it may be protein, it may be nucleic acid, it may be glycerol, it may be fatty acid, and many more things. Okay. when all these bio molecule constitute together then it form a cellular pool okay now let's see the elemental analysis of cellular pool elemental analysis of cellular pool okay now basically elements are divided into two category based on their relative abundance okay one is called major element and the second one is called minor element so first of all let's see the major elements what are those major elements major elements why this is called major because is contribute about to 98% of weight of protoplasm okay so let's see what are those that is carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen phosphorus and sulfur these are the six major element which are found in cellular pool okay out of which oxygen are the major one okay which contribute about to 65% then the followed by carbon which is about to 18.5% and the next one is nitrogen which is 3.3% and the last one that is hydrogen that is 0.5% okay so please do remember you don't have to learn phosphorus and sulfur okay so the next one is minor elements minor elements are also called trace element okay trace element why this is called minor elements because it is present in very little amount okay which contribute about to 2% of rest of protoplasm okay so what are those let's see here sodium plus potassium plus calcium 2 plus magnesium 2 plus etc all these charged ions which are found in a minor elements okay now after the elemental analysis of cellular pool we found that in a cellular pool different kind of compounds are also found okay such as organic compounds and inorganic compounds let's see here that is organic compounds and inorganic compounds then when we compare these organic compounds into inorganic compounds then we will find that the organic compounds are very very much as compared to the inorganic compounds okay so how much it is let's see organic compounds are nine times more as compared to the inorganic compounds okay organic compounds are nine times more As compared to the inorganic compound, so let let's see 
the analysis of organic compound. Analysis of organic compounds. First of all, you have to take a living tissue. Okay. Now, it may be vegetable or it may be piece of liver. Okay. Now, first of all, you have to take a living tissue. Now, you have to grind. Grind it in trichloroacetic acid. Okay, first of all, you have to know the molecular formula of acetic acid that is CH3COOH. Now, this is the molecular formula of acetic acid. Okay, but when we replace, okay, but when we replace three hydrogen atom by three chlorine atom, then it becomes trichloroacetic acid. Okay, now. First of all, you have to take a living tissue. Now you have to grind it in trichloroacetic acid. Okay, by using by using mortar and pistol. Now, once the grinding part is over. Now, you will obtain a thick celery. Now, this thick celery may be in the form of paste. Okay. Now, this paste you have to pass through filter. Okay. When you filter it, the filter is made up of cheese cloth or cotton cloth. Okay, now, when you pass through cheese cloth or cotton cloth, then you will obtain two different type of fractions. Okay, those biomolecules which can easily pass with cheese cloth or cotton cloth, that is called filtrate. Okay, or more technically, this is called acid soluble pool. Okay, and those molecules which cannot pass through cheese cloth or cotton cloth, that is called retentate. Or more technically, this is called acid insoluble pool. Okay, now on the basis of their size, these biomolecules are divided into two categories. Okay, let's see here. That is micromolecules and macromolecules. Micromolecules are a small in size. Okay, these kind of fractions are found in filtrate one, and the macromolecules are large in size that is found in filter uh, retentate one. Okay, so let's see. When talking about a micromolecules, then it has low molecular weight. Okay, low molecular weight. But when you're talking about a macromolecules, then it has very high molecular weight. Okay. So what are the range of this molecular weight? We're talking about a macromolecule. It consists 18 to 800 Dalton. Dalton is the unit in which these biomolecules are measured. Okay. Now, but when we come to Macromolecules, then the thousand more than thousand Dalton are found. Okay, now let's see some example. That is amino acid. 
amino acid are found in micromolecules but when the amino acid are polymerizes to form protein that is found in macromolecules okay in the same fashion we are talking about a simple sugar that is monosaccharide disaccharide oligosaccharide all these things are found in micromolecules but when the but when the simple sugar polymerizes to form polysaccharide it is also called carbohydrates okay then this is found in macromolecules okay in the same fashion that is nucleotide that is found in macromolecules but when the nucleotide polymerizes to form nucleic acid nucleic acid that is found in macromolecules okay and the last one is that is glycerol plus fatty acid when two sub unit combine together to form a lipid okay that is found in macromolecules okay now let's see these are the macromolecules out of which lipid is not a true macromolecule okay question arise the lipid is not a true macromolecule why because we are talking about a lipid then it comes in the range of 18 to 800 dalton but when you talking about the, all the macromolecules like protein polysaccharide nucleic acid then all these macromolecules are come into the range of more than 1000 dalton okay now the second point is lipid is water insoluble okay that's why it is found in retentate form okay now and the third point is when you talking about a protein polysaccharide nucleic acid okay then all these polymer are made up of this single monomer okay but when when you talking about lipid the lipid do not have a monomer so it is made up of two sub unit okay that's why lipid is not a true macromolecule okay now now let's see the average composition of say when you talking about a cell then we have to compare with earth crust okay as we all know that our earth contain more than 70% of water okay in the same fashion our cell also contains that is water more than 70 to 90% of water okay now p for pani then p for next one is p for protein that is protein as the name indicate pro 10 so it will be 10 to 15% okay now let's see here protein is end with a letter so the next one will be nucleic acid it contain 5 to 7% okay in the same fashion nucleic acid in with c letter so the next one will be carbohydrates okay which is 3% then the followed by lipid which is about to 2% and the last one is iron that is 1% okay you have to mark this point okay this is very very important this chart is directly taken from your ncert book okay please do remember mark this point very very important okay now let's move further after 
आफ्टर द एनालिसिस ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड नाउ नाउ द एनालिसिस ऑफ इनऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड ओके नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू टेक लिविंग टिश्यू जस्ट लाइक ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड ओके नाउ लिविंग टिश्यू नाउ दिस टिश्यू मे बी लिव और इट मे बी लिव ओके नाउ दिस टिश्यू इज कॉल्ड वेट वेट व्हाई दिस इज कॉल्ड वेट वेट because it contain water molecules in it that's why this living tissue is called wet wet okay now you have to first dry it in the presence of sunlight when you dry it then all the water molecules get reduced okay in the form of vapor now the remaining matter is called dry wet now now this dry wet you have to burn okay you have to fully burn now when you burn it then all the carbon containing compounds are oxidized in the atmosphere that is in the form of co2 so2 o2 h2o all of these are oxidized in the atmosphere and the remaining matter is called what that is called ash now this ash is nothing but this is called inorganic compounds okay this is how the organic and inorganic compounds are analyzed okay thank you guys for watching my video If you do really like this video then please subscribe the channel and share and share with your friends okay